Hi, this is Ms. Delosier, and these are your notes on fixed action pattern and supernormal stimuli. So the first thing we want to talk about is what is a fixed action pattern? Um, and we've talked about this a bit in class, but we're going to go ahead and review it here. So uh, I'm going to use the model organism of the three-spined stickleback fish. So this is my drawing of a three-spined stickleback. And this is a male three-spine stickleback. And you can tell it's a male three-spine stickleback because um, they have a red belly. And male sticklebacks attack other males that invade their nesting territory. And this is a very characteristic behavior. You see it um, in nature. You see it if you have them in the laboratory. It's just a very clear-cut, observable behavior. And what they noticed is that males have a red belly and females never have a red belly. And so what that means is that uh, that red belly probably has something to do with it. So they set up an experiment to test this, and they took a decoy. So that's not a real fish. That's a decoy fish, but it looks like a real fish, but it doesn't have the red belly. And so when they presented this decoy to the male fish, what they found was it does not attack that decoy. Um, however, when they present that same decoy with a painted red belly, it does attack. In addition to that, they found that if you take other decoys that aren't really shaped like fish, that are shaped kind of randomly, so that one's just a diamond, um, the stickleback will in fact attack that. And it will attack one that looks like this, or one that looks like this. It doesn't really matter what the shape is. What what it's attacking is the presence or the absence of the red. In fact, they actually noticed that um, they would actually kind of try and attack the outside of the glass if there was something red on the outside of the tank. So what they decided, what, what they classified this as, this is a fixed action pattern. So in a fixed action pattern, there's a sequence of um, unlearned acts that are linked to a stimulus. In this case, the stimulus is the red. And the sequence of unlearned acts is the attack behavior. Um, sequence of unlearned acts means that this is a completely innate behavior. This is not learned at all. And it's uh, normally an unchangeable behavior. So typically when you have a fixed action pattern, you can't, you can't deviate from that fixed action pattern. And it's carried to completion. So if you remove the fish decoy in the middle of the, um, the male's attack, it will continue the attack motion um, because it's not a it's not a learned attack behavior. It's, it's a hardwired in behavior. So that's a fixed action pattern. Um, so we're going to talk about a supernormal stimulus um, and we're going to start talking about a supernormal stimulus by talking about a uh, another case of fixed action pattern. So the case of fixed action pattern I want to talk about now is in the gray lag goose. So the gray lag goose is a goose and um, what we're going to look at in the gray lag goose is egg rolling. So you've got this goose and when it's sitting in its nest incubating its eggs, if the egg rolls out, it will go ahead and it will um, roll the egg using its beak back towards its body so it can then go ahead and incubate it. So um, there's a little video of this and it's going to play in the background so you can see everything. So what they noticed was uh, if you take the egg away from this goose, it will still continue doing that motion. So they know that that egg rolling behavior is a fixed action pattern. It sees the egg, it starts rolling the egg back towards it. If you take the egg away, it continues rolling it because again, it's an unchangeable behavior and it's going to go towards completion. Now where the supernormal stimulus comes in is the fact that these geese will actually respond to objects other than their eggs. So if you take the same goose that normally responds to its own egg and you go ahead and you present it with, say, um, an ostrich egg, right? So I'm going to take that same goose, I'm going to put it on the same nest, and instead of giving it its eggs, there's all its eggs, I'm going to give it a giant egg. And what you see is that it preferentially will roll the larger egg. So what I'm saying is I can put the ostrich egg in front of it 
and its own egg in front of it, and it will actually roll the the large egg back towards it. You can put a fake giant egg in front of it, and it will still prefer preferentially roll the fake giant egg over its own egg, and that's a super normal stimulus. So what's happening is you have an exaggerated stimulus, a giant egg, that elicits a stronger response. So it's it's going to go ahead and it's going to respond to that giant egg rather than its own egg. And we have to talk about evolutionarily what's happening there because that doesn't really make any sense, right? Like why would you roll a fake egg or a pool ball or a block or a Russian nesting doll back to your nest over your own egg? Well, the ultimate causation, the ultimate evolutionary response is um, – underlying that behavior is that larger eggs in nature typically produce healthier chicks. And when you actually look at studies, like scientific studies of that, measure the eggs, measure the, the survivorship of the chicks, you can see that larger eggs produce healthier chicks. And in nature, there's not a bunch of behavioral scientists out there swapping your eggs for giant ostrich eggs or giant Easter eggs or Russian nesting dolls. So it makes sense for the gray lag goose to dedicate most of its energetic resources to going ahead and retrieving those larger eggs over the smaller eggs. So that's kind of the, the super normal response is I have a giant exaggerated stimulus and it's going to go ahead and cause a stronger response. And it doesn't have to be just size. There's examples where a super normal stimulus can actually be, um, it can be color, it can be, um, like the red of the of the stickleback, it can be uh, sound. So that sign stimulus that we've been talking about doesn't have to be the size or the color of something. There can be other signals. It could be chemical even. So that's the supernormal stimulus. It is directly related to um, to a response that has a sign stimulus. So you have to have a sign stimulus that is going to trigger a response, so some type of stimuli triggers a response, and in a supernormal stimulus, a greater than average, like an artificially big stimulus, is going to trigger an artificially large response, and that's all that that means.